Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 26th. Today's topic is Fostering Learning, Engagement, and Community with Remind. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning, and Paula Noggle. Our special guests are Jordan Pedraza and a panel who are going to share their experiences with Remind. I will now turn the mic over so that Peggy can introduce Jordan and the team, as well as ask the newbie question. Hello to all of you. We are so glad to have you joining us today because we have a wonderful uh, presentation for you. Some of you may have been part of the earlier Remind um, webinar that we did that was back um, in August 2015. And everyone was so enthusiastic about it that we decided it was about time to bring Jordan and a team of presenters back to share some of the updates and also some of the great ideas that they have found for using Remind with their schools and communities. Jordan is currently um, the community leader at Remind, which as you all know is an ed tech startup that provides a messaging app for teachers to communicate with students and parents. Jordan has been in the ed tech world for a long time, almost 10 years with experiences in higher education, K-12, policy research, and even international settings. Before Remind, Jordan led community with Google for Education and helped universities, K-12 schools, and ministries of education adopt various Google tools. As you can imagine, Jordan is deeply passionate about helping communities explore and adopt technology for new learning models and creativity. And she has an amazing team with her today, and I'm going to let her introduce them as the presentation begins. But I want to say a special welcome to Michael, Carla, and Joe. We're so glad you're here. And now, if Jordan would like to get on the mic and answer our newbie question, we'd like to have you just briefly tell us why you think it's important for schools to use digital communication with parents, teachers, and even the broader community. Hi, everyone. Jordan here from Remind. Thank you so much, Peggy and team, for welcoming us and having us on today's webinar. And uh, hello to everyone joining us today. Uh, so I, I love this question, and I love that earlier everyone felt that it was important to use digital communication. Um, it, you know, it seems like it's a no-brainer, but I think it's important to not take that for granted. Um, and you know, when thinking about this question, is why is it important to include digital communication? I think it's also important for us to remember there's lots of ways for us to communicate with each other within our schools and classrooms and with our broader communities. Uh, but, but with digital communication, it just affords us um, an easier uh, way to send out uh, short uh, little pieces of information um, really quickly and easily with a large group of people. And so that just helps us save time. That helps us reach and build more relationships with more people with less time. And um, it also facilitates uh, stronger connections and relationships that can happen at the group level. You know, everyone has that transparency and information they need. Information is like oxygen. Information empowers us, informs us, and um, builds more trust and transparency. But then also it allows more dialogue. Um, it doesn't have to be just one way, but it can be two way or a group conversations. So everyone feels informed and has a way to ask their questions and, and get the information they need and share the stories and experiences they need. And we hear a lot of schools talk about how, uh, how it's important to share your school's story, your community's story, or else someone will for you, uh, since there's a lot of modes of communication out there. So, um, but that's the power of digital communication. It just allows you to have a broader reach 
and uh, but still do it in a, in a quick and easy and safer way. So uh, diving right into it. So our agenda here, we've already gone through introductions. So what I'm going to do first is give uh, a brief overview of Remind. Um, it looks like some of you have already used us before or are familiar. Um, but then, you know, for those who haven't, uh, definitely want to make sure everyone is aware of what we are and what we do and why. Um, and do a little kind of quick walkthrough of how it all works and looks like. And then we'll hand the floor over to uh, our wonderful panelists, Michael, Carla, and Joe, uh, who are all Remind Connected educators and an administrator. Um, and it's a wonderful program where we bring together uh, folks all around the world that are already using Remind and just seeking to share best practices and uh, tips and tricks and resources with each other. And then we'll have a Q&A at the very end. So to, again, to quickly introduce ourselves, and again, when we hand the floor over, uh, everyone will share their story. But I'm Jordan Pedraza. I lead Community at Remind. I've been there for about a year, and I'm based in San Francisco. And then we have Michael Buist, Carla Jefferson, and Joe Oliphant um, from all different parts around the country and all very great, uh, wonderful experiences uh, in the education space. And there's all their Twitter handles and information there. So one question I wanted to pose to the group, um, and we can just use the chat window to share our thoughts. How do you all communicate uh, with your community, with parents, with students, with colleagues, with anyone? Um, and we can kind of have that going on in the background as I kind of set the context uh, for why uh, here at Remind, our mission is to connect every teacher, every principal, every student, parent uh, in the world to improve education. So as I said earlier, there's lots of ways to communicate. And uh, oftentimes, schools need to um, use lots of uh, different ways to reach everyone, because everyone has their different preferences or what's most effective. But, uh, but what's important is reaching everyone where they are. And that is what Remind is about. Our mission is to uh, make it easier for uh, teachers and, and principals and students and parents to be all in the loop uh, so that they can communicate easily on any device, instantly and safely. And then ultimately, we hope that builds relationships, but ultimately uh, improves outcomes and, and builds community. And those are all very important things um, for, for what we're trying to do in our schools. And so a little bit more on this um, idea of reaching folks where they are. So uh, the Pew Research Center has done a lot of research on uh, trends, on how uh, you know, we use mobile phones. Um, so it's, it's getting pretty um, clear that um, most folks have a cell phone now. Uh, and particularly when we think about our students kind of growing up, um, a lot of them are really active on their phones and, and love texting. Uh, but even parents are also saying that uh, they feel mobile devices can afford new learning opportunities. It can continue to inspire and spark in curiosity and, and, and kind of nurture that learning and growth. Uh, and then also, more importantly, if you really want to get something out um, and have it be read and maybe responded to, uh, text is still the most powerful um, compared to email. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind and consider when we think about reaching people where they are. So what is Remind? So basically, we're about easy, accessible messaging. Um, we believe in the power of choice, where educators or school leaders can choose how they want to send information out, and then for students or parents or their colleagues to choose how they receive those messages. Uh, so it works with text-only phones, it works with smartphones, it works with tablets, it works on the web, so if you're using a desktop or a laptop. Um, and then also we launched translation last year, so when you send out a message, you can translate, um, I think it's over 90 languages now, we've just been adding a lot more. Um, it's powered by Google Translate. So basically, if you have uh, multiple languages spoken in your community. It still lets everyone uh, be in the loop and allows everyone to communicate. And then the unique thing about Remind is, you know, there's plenty of apps or tools out there that you can use to message each other or text each other. Uh, but with Remind, we, we built this with education in mind. So safety and security are paramount. Uh, first, all uh, messages, uh, whether it's over announcements or one-to-one uh, -one conversations or group conversations, everything is archived um, and available to download and view at any time. So, so that's really important. 
And then secondly, no one can ever see each other's phone numbers. So when you sign up for Remind, we provision um, kind of this phone number code for you that's not your real phone number. And then when you're inviting people to your class and you're sending messages out, they won't ever see your phone number and you won't ever see theirs. So we respect privacy and uh, make sure that you know, everything is archived um, and can be viewed, but at the same time, um, not exchanging or sharing personal information. And as far as who's using Remind to date, so we have over 35 million uh, educators, students, and parents, uh, which means it's about, I think, over 2 million teachers, and then everyone else are students and parents. Uh, and then also we have around 20,000 principals actively using us so far. Uh, and principals, they use it with their whole community. They can use it with their, their staff and teachers, with their students, with their parents, or other community members. <coughs> And then as far as our reach so far, uh, we're used in over uh, half of U.S. public schools um, and um, actually Title I schools where they have uh, kind of lower income communities uh, were also used quite a bit there, which is really important to us. I mean, accessibility is, is uh, paramount for us. Uh, so in total, we've delivered billions of messages and just, you know, really excited with uh, how far it's gone and um, looking forward to seeing where things go. So a quick demo of uh, what Remind looks like, uh, especially for those who haven't uh, tried it out before. So basically how it works is uh, when you create a class, um, and this can be done on the web at Remind.com when you sign up, or on the mobile app, you can install it on your iPhone or Android phone. Uh, when you create a class, you get to choose the class code. And then the code is how people will join your class. So if everyone um, texted eight to the number above 81010, and then the code there is at Remind Live, so that's the code. Um, or if you already have the mobile app and if you're outside the U.S., um, you can even install the Remind app and, and join the class through this code too. Um, so when you, when you text this number or join through the app or on the web, you're basically joining my class. And then I can see on my end, as people join my class, who, who's joining, and I can send out messages to them instantly. I can send a, a broadcast message to everyone in my class, um, or I can even just send an individual message to just one, one in person individually. So, uh, so I'll, I'll actually send out some, some test messages later on uh, throughout the presentation to kind of give you a, a chance to see how it all works. I'm just going to write a quick run right now welcoming everyone. So I just sent out a message if, if you're in my class. Um, and then what you can also do is you can reply back to me uh, after I've sent that message out. You can reply back whether you're on text or on the mobile app or on the web. And I can, we can have a one-on-one -on -one exchange that no one else sees. Um, and then I can continue to uh, send out messages to the class all in one place. So that's just kind of a little demo of how it works. And then to walk you all through just some of the key features. So, so this is what uh, it basically looks like for me as a class owner. Um, you can see who's joined your classes. So for all of the classes you have in one place, I can see uh, the names of my participants in my class, just so I know, you know who's in the loop. Um, and then I can choose to send messages out to everyone all at once, or I can send individual messages to people, um, or even a small group with up to 10 people. And then I also have delivery receipts, so I can make sure that a message was actually delivered and, and people got it. And then a little bit more about the messaging control piece. So like I said before, um, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, what messages you want to send to whom. So I said that you can choose, choose to send it to everyone, you can choose to send it just one way um, or two way, you can turn uh, chat or replies on or off. Uh, it's, it's up to you. Um, and then you can set office hours to let folks know um, when is the best time to reach you. So I can say Monday through Friday, you know, this time to this time I'm open for chat. Or maybe only Wednesdays, you know, at this time. Uh, so whatever works with your schedule. And then when people try to message you outside of those hours, we give them a little prompt that says, hey, um, you know, Jordan is, is not available right now. Are you sure you want to send this? Uh, so, so that we just try to, um, you know, make sure everyone has that choice and flexibility with how they want to communicate in their community. 
One of the most popular uh, features uh, we see in our community is scheduling. Um, so how it works is when you send out a message, let's say it doesn't need to go out instantly right away, but you know it will need to go out eventually at a certain date or time. Uh, but we want to you know, make that easy for you to just kind of set that up in advance and not have to worry about it later. Uh, so when you send a message, we have a little calendar button, and you can use this on the mobile app or on the web, and you can choose the specific date and time for when a message goes out. So I can schedule a message to our little group, group that we've created today. Um, I'm going to do that right now, actually. And what will happen is I just basically type in the message. So I'm going to write, this is a scheduled message. And I'm going to choose that it will be sent out today in about five minutes, so at 9.26 AM. And then I click the Schedule button. So this is all on the mobile app or on the web um, when you click on that little calendar icon. Uh, and that's it. It takes me seconds, and I'm done. So if you have standing meetings, if you have um, events that are going to happen in the future, um, and you can preset or pre-schedule your messages in advance. And then I mentioned translate. So um, when you're composing a message on the mobile app or on the web, and let's say you know you have family members or students or community members who speak uh, other languages than, than what you speak, so you can. Um, click on the little globe button. Uh, that's also in the mobile app or on the web. And then we show you a menu of uh, over 90 languages that you can use to translate your message. So um, English, Spanish, German, Italian, French, um, there's, there's tons of languages available. And even if folks are subscribed to your class as a text, they still see the message translated, uh, which is really cool. Um, of course, if they still uh, log in on their mobile app or on the web, they see the message translated uh, as well. Um, so, but it works across all devices in that way. And then the other um, lesser known uh, feature uh, that, that I think is also really important and exciting is when you're using the mobile app or, the, uh, or on the web for Mind, you can attach um, other content to your messages. So you can attach pictures, uh, PDFs, files, um, even voice clips. We have a little microphone button when you're composing a message, and you rec can record um, a voice clip for up to 30 seconds. Uh, and then you can send that out that's attached to your message. Um, you can even include links. Um, we've even seen uh, some teachers and, and principals out there use, and students too, uh, use memes and emojis. Um, it, it's really just kind of like any other messaging app. You can kind of um, plug in whatever you like. Um, and again, it's all archived, and even if people are only subscribed as a text, uh, they get a little link that they can uh, visit and, and check out the extra content if they want to. So that's an overview of Remind. Um, and like I said, we'll have time for Q&A if you have any questions on uh, how it works, um, you know, uh, the background and story about how this all came to be. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hand the floor over to Michael, and he's going to share his story about Remind. Morning, everybody. Um, I was, saw my name pop up there, and I'm like, oh, I better clear my throat. Um, still, you know, it's 9.30 here in, in Arizona, but like uh, I think it, Peggy, Peggy said that we ha all had our morning voices on. Um, so here's my story with Remind. Uh, turns out... I just was kind of trolling Twitter one day several years ago, um, and I saw something come across the stream and <clears throat> looked into it, signed up, and oh, I don't know, about a year, <clears throat> excuse me, a year later, uh, Brett Koff, the CEO, kind of let me know, hey, you know what, you were like one of our first teacher um, subscribers. Um, it was he and his brother had, a, had an account, a couple other dummy accounts, and, and there I was, like one of the first uh, people to sign up. Um, and then I saw some data when I was presenting to another group of people about how many messages had been sent, and, and I think at the time it was like a billion messages had been sent, and I saw now it's like, what, 2.5 billion messages. And Brett had said, you know what, you were the person who sent out like the very first message from uh, an active subscriber. So my story goes back to uh, when this, uh, when Remind really was a startup. 
Um, so it's kind of cool to to see the evolution of this product and my it has evolved big time. And <clears throat> every evol evolution of it, every iteration um, makes it better for teachers. Um, I think I put in the uh, in the chat that uh, this company is teacher obsessed, and uh, Jordan can. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's even one of their value statements is, is teacher obsessed, and I think it's over their wall. Yep. Um, the the other things about this uh, this product, this service um, that make it so powerful is <clears throat> it's pretty seamless. Um, whether you're on uh, the mobile app. Whether you're on the desktop version, which I believe there's there's an OS desktop, and I think there's a Windows uh, desktop version. Plus, you've got the um, the web version as well, um, and, and everything kind of looks the same. I mean, the, your dashboard is is pretty similar whether you're on the web or you're on the uh, the mobile app. So that kind of helps people who are new to uh, ed tech. Um, or new to it, just a, a new tool. Um, things don't get too confusing. Um, buttons are the same, um, so I really think that helps people pe help people stay on board. Um, you can see right there some of my uh, some examples of my story. Um, I'm a fifth grade teacher, so we I don't have a whole lot of students who are subscribed to the class um, just because you know they're 10 and 11, and, and a lot of them don't have mobile devices. Uh, currently, we have 185 people subscribed to our fifth grade um, uh, class, and I would say maybe 10% of those 185 are students, and that's probably pushing it. Um, so the voice that I use when I communicate uh, to families is as if I'm talking to uh, the parents and not talking to the students. And that's probably something different for people who use Remind for older kids like junior high and high school kids. Um, so our primary uh, means of using Remind is to give homework details. Um, it's a great conversation piece for uh, for families when their kids get in the car from the bus stop or at parent pickup, and and those parents already know what kids are uh, doing for homework that night or what they did in class. Um, Jordan put in there about adding memes or adding pictures to announcements, and I think that's really helpful too. Where if you can capture some event from the day um, and then post it as an announcement, and it really just helps parents kind of um, start those conversations on the way home rather than how was your day and the, the, the canned response is good. Um, so that certainly helps. Um, the, the other thing that has been really helpful about Remind is that you know mobile phones and mobile devices are they're everywhere um, and, and so many people have those. And even though they have those, they may not necessarily be connected to things like Twitter or to Facebook, um, even our website that we use to communicate with families. Um, it's a little bit hard to use when you're when you're on the go. Um, it is mobile enabled, but still, it's you know you're looking at a small screen of content that was designed for a much larger screen. So um, that certainly is is helpful. Um, another great use case for Remind. For us has been, and it's, it 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 just kind of came out of a need. Um, our school is it, it, we're a total commuter school. There's a, the 600 students that that go to our school. I think three of them live in the neighborhood. Um, so you have all these parents who are driving their kids, or they're taking, they're putting them on a bus, and throughout the day, uh, people's schedules change. Um, you know, a sports schedule changes, or an, uh, an appointment happens, or something like that. And so, what we found is we were getting so many calls during the day, and this was just in one classroom. I mean, it was like six to ten phone calls a day, and it was driving us crazy to the point where um, we were even taking the phone off the hook because it was so um, it, it was just it was so distracting. And we've just kind of trained parents. And even our front office to say, hey, use Remind and use the Remind chat feature 
uh, to communicate with us throughout the day. One of us is going to have our phones on us at any point. Um, here, here's kind of what we expect. We want you to message us, um, you know, at least 30 minutes before the end of the day, so we can communicate that to your to your students. Um, and so that's kind of evolved too, because parents would message us, hey, you know, we need to send uh, somebody on this color bus today instead of going home, whatever the whatever the story was. And we get the message and we tell the kids, but there was no way for the parents to know if we really got the message. And they, you know, they were stressed out about how their kid was going to get home. So now we've gotten to the point of, you know, once we get that message, I immediately tell that kid, or you know, as soon as I get the message, I'll tell the kid, and we'll take a picture. And the picture is always the kid with their thumbs up, um, and we send it right back to the parents. And, and the message is, "Got it." Um, so it's just been um, it, it, a seamless communication tool um, uh, for parents. Um, Trying to think of any other great uses of oh the another great use of of remind is they've got some of those built-in features like audio notes or voice notes. Um, the voice notes has been so powerful um, using chat with parents where a student has done something absolutely amazing. You know they they did really well on an assignment or a test or they you know something really great happens um, and we can use a voice note and even a picture to have the kid record themselves. Um, about something really important that day, and we send it off to the parents, and it's just it's pretty powerful. And then when the kid gets with their parent later that day, and they can replay the um, uh, replay the audio message of their the kid's voice, it, it's that's you know it's a powerful powerful tool. And I guess the the last thing that's been really helpful is um, the stamp feature. Um, stamps has been kind of around for you know a little while with Remind, um, but it allows your subscribers to interact with you um, with just four simple um, uh, simple icons. So you've got uh, I can't remember what all the icons are. You've got um, the star. You've got a check mark. You've got an X. You've got a question mark. Um, and so one of the ways that we'll use that is we're asking questions to parents and we then define what the stamps mean for that particular announcement and we get that feedback back from them. Um, so if there was, you know, did your child give you the permission slip, um, check the check mark for yes, uh, X for no. And now we know that we just need to follow up with those people who marked X. Is it a case of the kid lost it? He wasn't at school today. You know, it, it just kind of helps uh, uh, facilitate those conversations and make sure everybody is uh, part of that communication flow. So. Um, I don't know if I've taken more than um, more than my time. I know we've got uh, Carla and Joe, um, so I guess oh, there's some examples of uh, of us communicating with family. So this was a, a an event called Lunch on the Lawn, and it was a way to get people to come to have uh, lunch on our campus. Um, plus, there's a, a hyperlink there for people to use uh, Sign Up Genius. To um, to help uh, with the volunteering on that day. This was a, another one where we've we've done this a couple of times where we've added pictures to it, and once again to increase the engagement with those conversations uh, to caption that picture. Um, and I can't remember what the kind of the winning caption. Oh, binoculars. Was the uh, was the the one that we voted on as the caption for that picture? And there's another example of us using um, the voice notes. This this happened to be I was in the car um, and I had forgotten to send out the reminder of tonight's assignment um, to the families before I left school. So I'm sitting at a um, at a red light and you know. It's like, okay, I don't know really when this red light is going to change. I'm kind of paying attention to it. And I was like, oh, I've got voice notes so I can send um, the message just in a different format. And the cool thing about it, if you notice, there were five stars next to that. And I, you know, I didn't ask what those five stars were, but 
I don't get a whole lot of those uh, stamps if I don't ask for the stamp. Um, so I think people are pretty cool. Or they thought it was pretty cool that they got a audio announcement. Alrighty, thank you so much, Michael, for sharing your wonderful examples. Uh, now we're going to hand it over to Carla Jefferson and hear her story. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Carla Jefferson. I'm the um, Instructional Technology Coordinator for the Darlington County School District. Um, this is my first year in this position, and, and so I say, you know, that I am forever an ELA teacher. I was a middle school teacher for um, 17 years um, before I took this job. So we're in what we call phase one of our digital transformation um, for our district where we're doing a three-year cycle to put one-to-one -one devices in the hands of every learner. Um, before that, um, as a sixth grade English teacher, we had, um, we were a part of a pilot. This is our third year um, with one-to-one -one iPads for sixth graders. So um, last year uh, we used Remind as a team and a couple of years ago, um, I guess when Remind first started, we joined, I joined and created an account because um, if any of you have ever taught middle school, um, sixth grade especially is extremely difficult as they're making that transition. And so um, we call book bags the black hole. In elementary school, they have um, those folders, homework folders that come home, and we stop that in middle school. And so when we got to parent-teacher conferences um, or if we were calling parents because of, you know, not receiving assignments or, you know, not receiving, parents not getting information, um, we just wanted to to put a handle on that as soon as possible. The easier the transition can be um, coming from middle school, elementary school to middle school, you know, we wanted to do everything that was possible. And so I would, um, we would, I would send out homework. So last year, um, we decided to set up a team account. So we just created um, a generic Gmail account that we all used um, to log in to remind, and so we worked as a team to send out daily homework or, you know, due dates or class or school reminders. Um, uh, on evenings and on the weekend, we practice content through gaming um, from wherever we were. Um, if you've ever played uh, Kahoot before, which is like a, you know, a gaming formative assessment tool, quizzes is exactly the same way. Um, the kids like quizzes a little bit better than Kahoot sometimes because the questions and the answer choices are on their device versus them being, you know, on the screen so we could play from home. So I remind would allow me to text students and parents a reminder of um, the um, online game time, like what time we will play, and I would send out the code in order for them to play, um, you know, like maybe before a test or on the weekends, and um, you know, parents would say, "Miss J, um, if we go play on Wednesday, can we play after seven because we don't get out of Bible study until then?" Or you know, if we go play on Sunday, you know, can it be a little later in the afternoon because once that text comes through, um, for those kids who don't have cell phones, they're like taking over their parents' devices. Um, and then since we had one-to-one -one iPads, we did set up the app on. Um, the kids' devices, and so, you know, if we had initially told them that they didn't need something for class and we knew they were coming to us next, we could send out a reminder to remind them, you know, um, you do have a few minutes to run your locker and get your math book if you left it. Um, or, you know, remember that today um, you're not going to gym, you're going to um, health, so you don't need to bring your uniform. In this new role, I use um, Remind to Share Tech Tips resources and reminders to teachers and staff. Um, and we even actually have a board member or two who um, have signed on to participate in the district. So um, because right now I, I, I laughingly say that I am an instructional team of one because there's only one person in the district that does that and we don't have, um, we don't have like specialists in school. So I'm a district administrator and right now it's just me. So we want to um, 
keep our teachers um, excited about, you know, like I share resources. Um, I do a weekly s'more newsletter that I send out via Remind. Um, I do a weekly podcast with um, one of my um, former tech teacher peers. We send that information out through Remind. Um, every now and then we'll do giveaways, um, even links to videos. Like if I see a really neat TED Talk and I want to start spark a conversation about it, um, I'll send that to them and they can, you know, chat me back. To um, encourage teachers to um, to even um, join Remind because at the beginning of the school year I visited schools and kind of shared Remind and encouraged them to join. Um, that very first week we did a giveaway. You know, the first five people that will chat me a snapshot of their Remind, you know, the Remind message they sent out. You know, we send them iTunes gift cards or or something like that. Um, and I try, and at the beginning, we were doing probably like two or three a week. I try really not to do any more than one or two um, a week, not to bombard them. But I also stress to them because all of our teachers have, um, all of our teachers receive an iPad and a MacBook um, as a part of district equipment. So, you know, I, I encourage them that, you know, if you don't have an unlimited tech plan, just download the app, and we go through the process of how to download the app on their phone, uh, I mean, on their device so that they're not using up data, and then, you know, they just use the app instead of the text messages. Um, so here just I um, want to share a few examples. This um, uh, teachers who participated in the Global Read Aloud, um, they, if they sent me pictures, then, you know, I'd encourage, I'd share that out to other encourage other teachers to participate or to, um, you know, just to highlight some of the great things that we have going on in our district because, as I, as I said, you know, we do have our Remind account is open to anyone in our district who wants to participate. So we do have, I have principals, administrators, teachers, board members, community members who just want to see what's going on. Um, we do a, a slow chat every Friday, so I, you know, I'll send out a reminder to encourage teachers to participate in our Twitter slow chat, or I'll, you know, and I'll try to add as much as possible, like the link to the tech tidbits and also the podcast, if it's all going out at the same time, so that I don't um, bombard them too much with messages. And then here are examples from, you know, what we did as a team. So. My favorite images to send are memes. As a matter of fact, I have friends where the only way we conversate are through memes and animated GIFs. So um, to encourage students to, you know, um, get ready for ACT Aspire and their parents, I would, you know, send a meme and just remind them and encouragement. And then um, this is an example of how I would share out um, the information for our quizzes game. And I think that might be that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Carla. And now um, our last panelist, uh, Joe Oslin. Can you uh, take the floor? Hey, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe. I'm uh, 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 an administrator um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm actually uh, within, been with the same organization uh, for 12 years. I started as a teacher. Uh, that I kind of started as a technology uh, coach, then I was the tech director, and then I am currently in my sixth uh, my sixth year as uh, as an administrator. So um, my my story is kind of um, you know being within the tech world and then taking an administrative role. I was always consider myself being a very techy um, techy administrator. So uh, that's I think it's a good skill set. I wish that my uh, principal when I was teaching had that. But um, we, you know, my school. Um, we're, there's 10 schools within the the Pittsburgh area, and um, last year, uh, the past five years, I've been at the high at, at the high school. And my teacher actually came to me. My English 12 teacher came to me and said that she um, wanted to communicate better with her. Um, with, this is not last year. Probably a couple years before when it was Remind 101, and uh, I kind of subscribed to it and just wanted to kind of feel it out and. See how it was going, and then really, she really got some great feedback um, with using um, with using the uh, the tool, 
And um, so I wanted to kind of jump on and, and make that one of my goals for this year. And, you know, from, um, you know, starting the beginning of the year, I was actually, I went to a different school. And fortunately, it was one of the one of the goals, you know, at the end of each year, we do a parent survey just to kind of check in and to see how, um, you know, culture has been and how their kids, if they felt safe and all those different pieces, you know, if they were happy, if they got a good education. And one of the things that from looking through all the surveys is that, you know, the parents wished for some additional uh, communication. So, um, you know, I feel that communication with, you know, with my community and or school community is, is one of my uh, one of my good traits. And I kind of, you know, I said, hey, I'm going to take this this role, and then, you know, I mean, we're going to start a remind. Uh, we're going to do Twitter. We're going to, you know, use Instagram and just all those different pieces. Because I know that as a parent, you know, I've have, I have five children myself. You know, you get bombarded with, you know, things coming home in the folders every day. And so I wanted to kind of make sure that I could think as a parent, but also as an administrator of like, you know, what's the easiest way. Um, to communicate, and, and honestly, the remind was the simplest thing that I could, you know, uh, explain to all parents. You know, whether they were, you know, younger parents or older parents, it just, hey, text. Well, I don't do text messaging. Well, hey, use the email, uh, the email option, and like just that communication. I could see every day on my phone, I would get that beep. You know, another subscriber, another subscriber, and I just wanted to encourage as many parents um, and students as possible to do that. So. Um, you know, I wanted my teachers also to, to to subscribe to the same exact thread, so that they knew what information that I was sending. So, um, you know, I you know we did we would use it for school events, um, community events. Um, if there was a, a bus that was running late, you know, on the way home, like hey, you know, bus 425, you know, is running late. Um, you know, it, it eliminated the whole snow chain piece because you know that's when I when I told parents I said if there would be a delay. The first minute that I'm going to hear from it, I'm going to log into my phone. Boom, you're going to get that message. Um, so that was the first thing before contacting the news. And like that's any of administrators, that's a pain in the butt because it takes a while. You have to log in and do the codes and and everything else. So um, it's uh, it's very um, you know it was it was a great tool to, to be used. So um, my story that I kind of want to share is you know I I try to use the creative ways of you know linking YouTube events and. Um, you know, linking um, you know the pictures, and you know, doing some Google surveys, and just kind of plopping the link in there, and just like how to like make that information, that data accessible to parents, and just in, a, in an easy way, because you know we all know the mobile devices that you know people will sit there in the doctor's office, and they'll be able to you know access all their information from their phone. So it was just really, really convenient. So the the story that um, that I kind of wanted to share was kind of of a coincidence. I have, I always try to like schedule some of the messages out, and um, you know I had a parent. You know I, I like to kind of greet kids as they're as they're leaving the building, and I had a parent. I was like, Hey, Mr. O, can I ask a question for you? I was like, Yeah, wait, wait, one second. We had a group of kids that were just kind of coming down the steps, and um, it was within that minute. So the question that they had was about a parent event, and um, as soon as the rest of the the kids came down the steps. She had got my scheduled message, and you know, I was like, "Hey, what, what is that that you needed to ask me?" And boom, she was like, "You know what? It's pretty funny that exactly what I was going to ask you was the same exact thing that that you just sent the remind message." So it's it was very strategic um, and deliberate of why I sent the messages out and try to like you know I don't want to give it too many times where I'm sending messages out, but it's just uh, an easy tool, and and that was something that just kind of popped popped in my head that that parent really, really enjoyed. So it was it, it showed me as, a, as an administrator new to this building that um, it was something that they really enjoyed. So some of the, the next things that, um, you know, as we go through some of the examples, um, you know, I do make use of that chat feature. You know, if I send something out, then parents, you know, can really quick, you know, if they need to ask an additional question and, you know, um, something on school delays and snow delays and, you know, the, this parent right here that you see, um, you know, I just wanted that feedback, and she made it a point to like, hey, I I like, you know, being able to kind of communicate if it's something simple, if it's a special dress down day or whatever. Um, so that that kind of you know showed me that these that the parents are really in, engaging and enjoying this type of communication. So uh, we we do something that I've done for the past few years as um, to do a parent coffee where I invite parents in. Um, very small agenda. It's more about the parents. It's more about you know what they want to hear and what they want to see, and just monthly updates. Um, trying to get you know students to kind of come down and share what they're doing. 
but it might be a small group of parents where we have great conversation. I, you know, I bring them coffee and I bring them donuts, and then we just kind of talk. So like this is just an easy way to, you know, hey, we're gonna have great conversation tomorrow. So I don't want to, you know, shove it down their throat, but I might send a message the week before and then a, then an update. So and that's the same thing that I'll send out in a Twitter blast, you know, or on Instagram too. But it's just another tip that's gonna be right to their phone. So. And you can see a couple of these other messages um, using, you know, with the, the wonderful countdown for state testing, uh, just kind of doing an update. And that's, that's in, my purpose for that is just making sure that parents are in the loop, that they are aware um, that we're making it a, a priority for making sure that their kids are ready and that we're teaching through the test. Um, then the middle one there is, you know, I did, um, you know, YouTube. We actually had some parents that were questioning if we did the um, the pledge. So I wanted to make sure that you know I share that with them, and it's cute that the the parents can hear. And that was probably one of my favorite uh, posts because I got a lot of feedback from parents of like, hey, thanks for for sharing that. Um, so that's, that was a great a great piece. And then um, even with our evening, we have uh, school community council meetings, and um, you know just to have that communication to our parents about what the purpose is, and not that we're just having a meeting to discuss whatever, but hey, we want our kids to come and, and so that we're being deliberate. So, um, thanks, for, thanks for the opportunity to share, guys. And it's, you know, it's great to be able to hear you know, the perspectives from the administrator and then plus from the teacher. So um, I would say as teachers, you know, keep rocking and rolling. You know, I actually, this year, I had all my teachers use Remind. And you know, I want to kind of you know, really connect into that community and really encourage them to, uh, to keep communicating with the rest of the people within the community. So, um, everyone else, thanks for the opportunity to kind of share my story. Thanks, Joe. So awesome to hear uh, the different perspectives from a current teacher, former teacher, instructional technologist, and then Joe, who's kind of spanned um, all of those categories. So um, really quickly before we dive into uh, Q&A, I just wanted to review uh, how you can get started with Remind. Um, so the first step is to sign up. <clears throat> and you can uh, either get the free app from um, any app store, uh, the iPhone or iOS uh, store or Google Play. You just go to remind.com slash apps and then you can select which uh, app you want to get. Or you can just go to remind.com and you can create a free account there. And I want to reiterate we're 100% free, uh, free for everyone in education to use. Um, a lot of people ask how do we do that. Um, right now we're privately funded. Um, but we are going to be adding some other additional optional features um, that would come um, for uh, an additional fee. But, but the core messaging and everything we've covered here today will always be free. Secondly, after you sign up, you can link to your school. Um, and it's location-based, so if you just start typing in whatever your school name is, depending on where you're based, uh, we'll kind of auto-suggest that for you. And the reason why you want to select your school is you can um, Make sure that you can uh, chat with your fellow teachers or colleagues that are also using Remind and link to your school. Um, so that makes for a really seamless, easy um, kind of teacher-teacher chat happening um, at the school level. And then also we are uh, rolling out a new feature for principals, uh, Remind for Schools. And so for everyone that's linked to the school on Remind, that makes it easier for the principal to reach everyone um, as a group. We create a staff class based on whoever's linked to uh, the school at, on Remind. Uh, and then be, eventually anyone who's linked to a school, whether you're a student, teacher, or parent, um, will make it easier for the principal or school leader to contact everyone, um, all from one place. And then third, you can create your classes um, on the mobile app or on the web. You can create as many classes as you like. Um, I wanted to point out that you can add multiple owners to your class. So if you have more than one teachers or, or a team, that all needs to send out messages or chats, that's also available. Um, and again, you can create, you can choose the class name, you can choose the class code, you can even choose a little icon. Um, you've probably seen them in the previous slides. You can have a rocket ship or an apple or um, dinosaur or other subject-based one like a globe or um, a test tube for science. So there's lots of cute little icons you can use to have some fun with it. Uh, so that's how you get started. You can download the app or visit the web. Um, link up to your school and create your first classes and, and get folks in. Um, and then as far as some additional information is for resources, so we have 
Um, obviously, uh, you've all met us today and, and saw all of our Twitter handles. Feel free to reach out. Uh, feel free to email our support team at support at remindhq.com. That's for uh, brand new folks coming on board or if you're already using us, we're, we're always here to help with any uh, questions or issues you have. Uh, and then Peggy's already linked off to this, but we have a resource center at remind.com slash resources where there's a, a professional development presentation. Um, there's tons of uh, one-pagers and, and handouts. Um, there's tons of videos and just stories on, on how folks are, are using um, Remind. And then uh, uh, the last thing is our, our communities. So we have a Remind Connected Educator program. You just go to remind.com slash connected educator. And uh, Michael, Carla, and Joe are all in these communities. So we have badges for you, um, whether you're an educator or administrator. Um, you get access to beta test new features. You get access to swag. Um, you get to co-present on opportunities like this. And, and more importantly, you get to connect with a network. Uh, we have almost 2,000 um, Remind Connected educators and administrators around the world. Um, and it's just going to keep growing. And it's a really wonderful community. So I wanted to also share uh, that as a resource. Uh, and then lastly, and this is included in the live link, live link, uh, live binder, sorry, um, where there's tons of Remind classes, and I've already seen in the chat different examples of them. Ed Courage, um, Lucy Gray's uh, Global Educators class. Uh, there's a lot of Ed Camp classes. There's a lot of Twitter chat classes. There's, there's usually a class for everything you can think of. So it's another great way to get connected and expand your learning network out there. All right, that's all we had for you. So uh, thank you so much, um, everyone. And thank you to our panelists, Michael, Carla, and Joe, for taking the time to share your stories today. Um, so I guess I'll hand it back over to the Class Live team um, for questions. I did capture some questions as we were going along. Um, this one actually came from Michael. I'm curious about the title Startup with Rewind, will this ever be removed from this company that has so many users and subscribers? That's, that's a great question. Um, you know, it, it's a broader industry debate. What is a startup um, and what's a business or small business or corporation? Um, so I think personally I still like to think of us as a startup because um, we want to remain scrappy and creative and really team oriented. And I feel like the word startup, um, I think, elicits that feeling more. So to kind of mm -hmm. keep us humble and just really thinking about how we can keep listening and growing and improving. Um, but with that said, I think Michael has a great point that um, you know, we've definitely expanded quite a bit with our community base. And that's really exciting. And by no means does that mean um, that affects um, our reliability or quality or, or support or, or the features we're building. Um, you know, we definitely want to create a first class messaging app and solution for schools. So um, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I think the label may not matter as much. Um, you know, just think of us as um, really your, your messaging solution for schools. Um, I think for us it's still helpful, at least internally, to keep that spirit of innovation and creativity and and, and listening and, and exploration, though. So I still like to refer to us as a startup. <laughs> Thanks. How do you know when someone sends you a Remind notification whether you can respond to it or not? This person sometimes has tried to reply and gets a message that they have to con connect, contact that person another way. Yeah, great question. So when you uh, join someone's class uh, via text, um, if you can chat or reply back to them, we designate that in the uh, first kind of welcome message. So I think the first message says, um, reply to, you know, just enter a reply to contact your teacher or, or the class owner. Uh, so that's how you know if uh, chat is turned on uh, for your class. Um, but that is a great point. I'm going to definitely take that feedback uh, to the team because we could probably make that even more clear, especially if you're not using text, if you're using the app or the web. Um, mm -hmm. We could probably do some little not notification or um, reminder that uh, the, the class has chat on or off. And this goes back to quizzes. Uh, do they play in practice on quizzes on their computers and the remind notification tells them when the game's about to begin? Is that how that's how you set that up, Carla? 
Yes, um, that's correct. I send out the time that we're going to play just so, you know, if they're doing something else, they can kind of get to um, a device that they have um, wherever they are. Um, I had a mm -hmm. kid tell me that they played at IHOP one day because that's where they were and they wanted to participate. Mm -hmm. So I just send out the time and the joining code through Remind, and then they play mm -hmm. on whatever the device is that they have access to at home. Okay. Has anyone ever said that you send out too many messages? I guess that goes uh, to the whole team. This is Carla. Um, my teachers did at the beginning of the school year, mm -hmm. so I scaled down to about two a week mm -hmm. from them. But uh, parents, no, none of them. Mm -hmm. And they, when we were a team, I mean, they were getting any, they were getting four to six a day. So, but they wanted to stay on top of what the kids were doing, so it didn't bother them. Okay. Um, can can you be logged in as both a teacher and a student so you can see it from both perspectives? Yeah, great question. So when you uh, create an account. If you want the ability to create classes and send messages out, you'll want to sign up as a teacher. Uh, but then, even if you're a teacher, you can still join others' classes, and so you're still the recipient as well. Um, and then, for any classes you own, you can always see the messages that go out. And you could even subscribe to your own class if you want to just see um, what the messages look like when they go out. Okay. This was answered in the the chat during the show, but somebody asked it again. Uh, what was said about avoiding data usage? I guess for mobile device data plans. Hmm, I don't remember um, that specific context, uh, but I can point out uh, the way it all works is for the text piece, it just applies to whatever the text plan uh, you have. Um, mm -hmm. And then for data usage, so for the mobile app, uh, I think we looked at how we compare to another popular app like Facebook. And I want to say we're at about maybe a third of the usage. Because um, with your mind, it's, it's much more quick. You just kind of log in, you know, send whatever messages you need and kind of hop out or, or even chat. So, you know, it's just one-to-one -one kind of messaging. So, so I believe the, the data usage is even much lower than like a more popular, heavier app. Mm, okay. I saw some questions about um, multiple accounts open at right. the same time. Yeah. So, um, so when you log into your account, if you're a teacher, you can see all your classes that you own and the classes you've joined in one place. So you don't need to have multiple accounts um, all over the place uh, in multiple tabs or at the same time on a computer. It's all just in one kind of view where all your classes are on the left-hand side or on the mobile app as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if there's a limit to how many people can join your class, nope, there is no limit. Um, I think one of our largest classes has thousands of, of uh, participants. Wow. Um, so yeah, we definitely um, support larger groups too. Okay. And I think... Oh, I saw one more from Michael. Um, if a teacher has signed up for Remind but didn't link to a school, can a principal find those people or Remind for schools? Yeah, I did catch um, that. Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, mm, unfortunately, if they're not linked to a school, it's, it's kind of harder to find them. So, I think the best way to resolve that is contacting all the teachers at your school and making sure they know how to link uh, to their account or link to their school on their account. Mm -hmm. and, and they do that by going into uh, their settings on Remind. I think we have a little account button or, or settings button. Um, and then from there, you can just always add in the school you're at at any time. OK. I, they seem to be the questions that I was able to capture, unless more have come in. I saw a couple more. Um, do all messages from parents 
just go back to the teacher or principal, or can all messages be seen by everyone? Uh, so in a chat, um, that's only with the participants. So that's only, you know, if that's the parent or teacher in that chat, that's, they're the only ones that can see those messages. And then for Patty, uh, would an open chat be similar to a back channel like today's meet? And how many can participate? Great question. So we have group chat. You can have up to 10 people uh, at the same time. And so everyone can see each other's messages in real time. Uh, we are looking at role expanding that to uh, the entire class. Um, it's a little bit more technically challenging when you have people that are on text. <laughs> we want to make sure uh, they're not bombarded with lots of group messages. It'll probably maybe only be available just the mobile app or the web. But, but yeah, that's something um, we're looking to expand to the whole class so everyone can have a, a real-time discussion too. Mm -hmm. And what I'll also make sure to do right now and post in the chat, and maybe we can go back to our title screen really quickly um, to take note of just how to follow up with us. Um, where is it? There we go. So feel free to reach out to any of us if you have additional questions or thoughts. Um, totally happy to engage with anyone who's interested. Well, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Jordan. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will then tell us what's coming up next. Sorry, we just finished typing something. Thank you to our entire team of presenters. It is so inspiring to hear those real life examples of the things you've tried and how they've worked for you. And we so appreciate your taking your time to join us and share. And also a huge thank you to Jordan for organizing this and pulling all of these people and resources together. We do have some awesome shows coming up, so I hope that all of you will keep these in mind and join us every Saturday that you can. Next week we have a long-awaited presentation. We have been really wanting to learn more about copyright, fair use, and open licensing like Creative Commons. Dr. Royce Kimmons is going to join us and teach us all about that. So come with your questions because it's a perfect time to ask them and we always have so many related to copyright. April 9th we have an amazing 8th grade student. Coco Khalil is joining us to teach us all about being a maker and her example is a drill press. Wait till you see what she has to say. Then the next week. We won't have a show on April 16th because that is the Den Spring Virtual Conference and we all love to go to that. It goes all day long. So be sure to tune in to that. And then April 23rd, we have a great show coming up that's all about educational branding and important things you need to know both as a teacher and for your school about creating your brand and promoting it. Desiree Alexander will be with us. Mike Gorman is going to join us on April 30th and do an awesome presentation on PBL and STEM. That would be project-based learning. I know it will be great. And then we get to hear from the Kids Deserve It team, Todd Nesloni and Adam Welcome on May 7th. Both of them are amazing principals and it will be fun to hear all about that initiative. And then on May 14th, we have Nate Dalcom joining us as our next featured teacher. And he is the organizer of the March Book Madness program. If you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. But he's going to also talk about some of his other student projects. So we hope you'll all join us any Saturday you can. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all of his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. You can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate room. And as long as your event is free, or as long as your event is open, free to the public, your session is free. 
You can nominate a featured teacher, like we will have a featured teacher coming up in the next few weeks by filling this form out, or you can find the form in the resources tab of the live binder. When you exit the session, the survey should open up automatically, or you can take the link from the chat log or the tab in the live binder, the resources section at the bottom. Also, once you complete the survey at the bottom, you can, you can request a professional development certificate. Your name now prints out on it. And uh, please use a personal email for this request rather than a school email address. School emails tend to block these from getting to you. The recordings are available in iTunes U with a video collection as well as an audio collection. And there's an RSS feed as well as the entire Illuminate recording available on the Classroom 2.0 Live site. Special thanks to Jordan and Michael and Carla and Joe today for the presentation, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, the Black to Blackboard Collaborate for our web platform and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.